Kokoro text-to-speech might be the most human-sounding free AI voice yet. It even captures emotion, rhythm, and those subtle breathing pauses that make speech feel alive. No API, no GPU access, just a simple Python workflow locally. So what can it really do? Just listen to this. Hey everyone, welcome back to our little corner of geeky brilliance. Today's episode is so exciting. We're diving into something that honestly changed how I think about voice AI. I'm talking about those incredible tutorials from Analytics Camp, especially the ones on text-to-speech. They start from the very basics, what phonemes are, how graphemes map to sound, and then somehow build all the way to advanced stuff like multi-voice synthesis. Lewis, you've seen those, right? What did you think? Oh, absolutely. I watched the whole series last weekend. What really stood out to me was the clarity. You know how some tutorials either skip the theory or overload you with jargon. Analytics Camp finds that perfect middle ground. The pacing spot on and the examples, brilliant. Even if you've never touched text-to-speech before, you come away actually understanding why certain sounds or accents work the way they do, not just copying code. Exactly. It's like learning and having fun. If you haven't checked it out yet, trust me, you're missing out. Before we build anything, let's take a quick look under the hood of this super lightweight model with only 82 million parameters. The key that makes it better than other free and open source TTS models is that it combines a lightweight architecture with surprisingly rich prosody, which is perfect for content creators or for practicing your text-to-speech workflows locally. In fact, it's so lightweight that the entire package with these 54 voice models is only 29 9 megabytes. So here are four workflows from simple to advanced. Stay till the end because there is one secret that I'm going to share that can make any ordinary voice model generate the exact audio features you want. First, we will play around with the basic workflow and its parameters. Then I will show you subtle tricks to make voices sound natural, even with a super long text or story. When you want to test different voice models, we need to make it a little bit more advanced by setting up multiple texts with different voice types. And at the end, we see how it works with multiple texts from different languages as well. All right, now let's get practical. We will install these three Kokoro components in our virtual environment and import K-Pipeline, audio display, and sound file. For the basic workflow, this is how we build a model pipeline. Just specify the language code. Here, A refers to American English. We will explore the rest of the options soon. For now, let's keep the input text within the workflow. I will show you what these weird looking parts of the text are in a minute. All that is left is to invoke the pipeline with a specific voice model, and it will automatically generate a phonetic representation of the text and produce the output audio file and save it to your working directory. This rate value here is not the bitrate. It's the sampling rate of the audio data or the number of audio samples per second, which is set to 24 kHz. It's the default value for most TTS models. Let's execute this cell, then I will explain what these GS and PS things are. It didn't take long, so let's listen to the output audio first. You are watching a text-to-speech tutorial video from Analytics Camp. In this tutorial, we will build the easiest TTS workflow locally using completely free and open-source models from Kokoro. Now, we will dive into a more advanced version of this workflow with multilingual outputs. This output shows it has divided the text into two parts. First, you see the actual input text. This is called graphemes. And here in the code block, it's represented by GS. But if you look closely, you will see a bunch of strange looking symbols. These are called phonemes with PS as its short form here. These are the sound representations of the letters of this text. Because CTS models behind the scene use a type of symbolic language called the International Phonetic Alphabet or IPA. It represents each letter with a specific symbol that can be universally understood for all languages. So essentially, to convert text to audio, most TTS models first chunk the text into segments of around 50 words, then to their phoneme equivalents. Then an acoustic model translates these into a visual representation of sounds. Then a vocoder model converts them to a raw audio waveform. 
I don't want to keep the tutorial too technical, but I've included some more information and examples just in case you'd like to know more. So please pause the video and read these if you want. But for this next part, definitely attention is all you need. This is the trick I wanted to show you. So this green bar represents an audio track of the same output voice we just heard. These white waves correspond to the input text parts. I have color coded these above the line. And these pink bands represent different punctuation marks. You can see that the band for some punctuation such as a dot is wider. So there is a longer gap between spoken words in the audio and other bands such as this stress mark before the word free or narrower, so the gap between words will be shorter in the audio. The effect of the comma is in between these two, and so on. So basically from this visual representation, you can see that one of the best ways to get natural rhythm with an AI voice is to use different types of punctuation in your text to get the effect you want. For example, if you want a longer gap to show the effect of frustration or silence, instead of a dot, you can even use a double dash before and after that word, even though it's not grammatically correct. The second way is to use stress marks like these tiny up and down vertical lines up for higher stress or emphasis on a word before it, where the voice stops for a second, then more strongly pronounces that word, like the word free in our example. But perhaps the most effective way is the third method or using the phonemes based on the IPA system that I just showed you to guide the AI voice on how to correctly pronounce a word. This is especially effective for brand names, non-English names and difficult sounding names or or even when you intentionally want the AI model to pronounce the word in a wrong way just for its effect. But don't worry, you don't need to learn the whole IPA system to be able to do that. Just use a gazillion of free online tools that convert text to IPA phonemes and copy it in between two slashes, like this for the word Kokoro. Just remember to keep the actual word in brackets and its phoneme in parentheses. All right, enough of technical features for now. Let's move on to the second workflow. Because writing the input text in line is really annoying, we can slightly modify the previous workflow so we get an input box and we can work with longer texts. Remember that each 50 words or so in the text gets segmented. So instead of dealing with too many individual audio files later on, this part of the code basically collects all the audio parts from those text segments and concatenates them or joins them together. So you get one single audio output file even for a very long text. The rest of the parameters remain the same. Here I'm pasting around 900 words from the story called Animal Farm by George Orwell into the input box. I also chose a story-like voice model called AF Nicole for this part. You can see how massive the text is. I'm not going through all of it, but when it's generating speech, you can see it's chunking the text into 50 word segments with their phonemes. This one was about nine segments and the output audio is around seven minutes. I'm not going to play all of it, just the beginning and the end parts. Take a listen. Mr. Jones of the Manor Farm had locked the hen houses for the night, but was too drunk to remember to shut the pop holes. With the ring of light from his lantern dancing from side to side, he lurched across the yard, kicked off his boots at the back door, but I will come to the dream later. I have something else to say first. I do not think, comrades, that I shall be with you for many months longer. And before I die, I feel it my duty to pass on to you such wisdom as I have acquired. I have had a long life. I have had much time for thought as I lay alone in my stall. And I so you see that even with a long text, the model doesn't hallucinate the end parts at all. Same quality voice. Feel free to experiment with other voice models and text type. But if you're looking for a podcast style audio where different voices interact like a dialogue in a somewhat consecutive way, we need to go through this third workflow. For this one, I'm going to get an American female and a British male voice to talk about their experience of learning text-to-speech in this channel. Here I've listed all English voice model names just in case you'd like to test different ones. 
Then we keep track of the text segments and with simple for loops we can make input boxes for voice models too so we don't have to manually change the code lines every time. And finally we iterate over each input text and voice model and generate the audio files like previous workflows. But this time, because we have different speakers and text, we want the output audio files to have different names, for example, including the name of the speaker and the segment index as well. So just like before, we paste each speaker's lines into the input box, but now we are prompted to choose a voice with its exact ID, then the second input text and so on. Here I'm keeping it short to only two speakers with three terms. You can see that all audio files are generated consecutively. Take a listen. Hey everyone, welcome back to our little corner of geeky brilliance. Today's episode is so exciting. We're diving into something that honestly changed how I think about voice AI. I'm talking about those incredible tutorials from Analytics Camp, especially the ones on text-to-speech. They start from the very basics, what phonemes are, how graphemes map to sound, and then somehow build all the way to advanced stuff like multi-voice synthesis. Lewis, you've seen those, right? What did you think? Oh, absolutely. I watched the whole series last weekend. What really stood out to me was the clarity. You know how some tutorials either skip the theory or overload you with jargon. Analytics Camp finds that perfect middle ground. The pacing spot on and the examples, brilliant. Even if you've never touched text-to-speech before, you come away actually understanding why certain sounds or accents work the way they do, not just copying code. Exactly. It's like learning and having fun. If you haven't checked it out yet, trust me, you're missing out. We can work on the text to include more of those phonemes and punctuation features to make it even more natural, but I'm very happy with this. The excitement in the tone of voice of the female speaker and the calm, feature-rich voice of the male speaker work well together. I promised a fourth workflow with different languages as well, but unfortunately I forgot to video record it, so I have to play them from my files. Nothing fancy about the workflow really. Just add different languages and their equivalent voice models to a separate list and iterate over them just like how we did for the English voice models. The rest of the workflow is pretty much the same. I'm going to play the French and Chinese audio files with their input text. So let me know your opinion if you're a native speaker of these languages. What do you think about the voice quality? Super, on dirait que ce flux de travail pourrait reproduire fidèlement le texte avec une voix française. Incroyable, c'est une voix d'IA. I think these were fabulous. I'm also planning to make more multilingual text-to-speech and voice cloning tutorials, so if this idea sounds interesting, stick around. I've also included full introductory TTS tutorial and Langchain AI agent code tutorials in these videos, so check them out too.